Hello, everyone. We will start soon.
sua posizione in coda è la numero 5. Good morning, good afternoon, and even good night to everyone. Hope you are doing well. We're starting with this session. Can you listen to me well? Everything is all right? Okay, thank yes. you. Perfect. So first of all, just to disclaim, this session is being recorded. So if you wouldn't like to appear in the recording, Please don't open your camera and avoid speaking on the microphone if that's the case as well. Uh, we will start this session today, uh, the onboarding webinar with a little networking uh, moment. Uh, why am I? I just need a second to deactivate my notifications so I don't unfocus. There you go. Perfect. So uh, today's session is uh, dedicated to people that just recently joined the capacity for dev. We invited everyone that joined uh, since a month and a week ago on. Uh, and so this is also an opportunity to network, to learn about the, the platform and to see all the features that we have available for you. We have other dedicated sessions, for example, one next week, I will disclaim by the end of the session. This is the, the next week one is dedicated to presenting how you can build your project in Capacity for Dev, if you have an interest. But this section uh, is more a basic one for onboarding new members. Uh, so we'll start with a net networking session. Uh, we can follow this script or you can follow your own script. Just try to be brief. I will start. So my name is Ivan Pizeta. I'm, Yv I'm the Capacity for Dev Community Manager. I have a double nationality, both European, Italian and Brazilian. And what I expect from this webinar is to enhance community engagement from and for users in the platform. So if you like to present yourself, please raise your hands. You can use from this feature. Or just open your camera and I'll, I will call you. Right. OK, we can start with hand kit. Marcus, yes. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, my name is Marcus, uh, Marcus Handke. I'm the coordinator for the Team Europe Democracy Initiative. Uh, so a lot of coordination work, which means that this platform will be very useful for me. Uh, I'm already with the Commission for a while, but I've just come back from delegation and haven't used capacity for development. Maybe, maybe not at all, or at least very little. So I consider myself a beginner. All right. Thank you, Marcus. Uh... I didn't understand you, you never used it before or is the first time? Uh, well, formally, probably I have been in there on there already, but I really have to intensify my engagement with the platform. Okay, you are in the good place then. Thank you so much. Uh, let's go with the next one. Uh, Marcella. Um, yes, you're your microphone is off. Here there we are. Go. Thank yes. you. Uh, good morning, everyone. For me, it's this morning. I am in Italy uh, and in Rome, and but I work all over the country as a consultant for projects, uh, mainly investment projects uh, with a focus on Africa but we really look at uh, all over the world. I uh, have been in uh, the uh, diplomacy, economic diplomacy for more than 20 years, and now I am a consultant for Anderson. Anderson is an international 
uh, global firm uh, for uh, all services uh, related to business development, financial advisory, consulting, accounting, etc. And we have offices all over the world. Pleased to be in the network. Oh, happy to have you here with us, Marcela. Thank you so much. Uh, Talira or Brian? Well, thank you. Uh, good afternoon from Uganda. It's an afternoon here. Um, uh, greetings from Uganda. I'm Brian Salida Nangono. I, I work as, yes, please. I work as a, a project coordinator, a national project coordinator, and I coordinate all EU funded projects in SOS Children's Villages in Uganda. I'm a newbie here. Uh, this is my first time that I'm, I'm, I'm interacting with this platform. So I'm eager to learn how I can um, uh, how I can dissect and transfer through the platform, especially when it comes to managing EU-funded projects. Uh, uh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Brian. Uh, we have a dedicated session next week for uh, building your own project in Capacity for Dev. I will show you the initial step here, uh, but I invite you to join next week uh, we have it disclaimed on the best practices group. Maybe Maria, you could uh, put the link here in the chat for the next week's session as well. That would be helpful. Thank you so much, Brian. So Marina, the next one. Thanks, I'm happy to meet everyone. My name is Marina, I'm from Armenia. I'm very new on the platform, I actually just registered. I'm working as the executive director of uh, AGBU, which is the largest Armenian global nonprofit with 40 chapters uh, in uh, 40 countries. But my background is mostly in innovation. I was the founder of the Innovation Lab, Social Innovation Lab at UN, and have managed it for years, focusing on governance, innovation, and uh, citizen driven design. Nice. Thank you so much. Uh, we have such a Varied uh, public today. Uh, we see also from the poll I've launched. Uh, if you, if everyone could uh, pitch in, uh, where are you? Where, where are you right now? Not necessarily where are you from, uh, but I see for now we have people from Madrid, Paris, Brussels, Italy, Uganda, Mayugi, Spain, and Alicante. Well, we're from Armenia as well. Uh, which city exactly? Exactly, Marina. I'm in Yerevan. Thank you. Okay, nice. Thank you so much. So let's go to uh, Jena or Jena. Yes, hi, good morning. It's uh, Jena. I'm from Finland. Uh, Jena Kerkariuma is my name. I am uh, uh, the event manager of Team Europe Initiative Opportunity Driven Skills and Vet in Africa, and I'm based in Brussels. Nice to be here and uh, just looking uh, forward to find out more about Capacity for Dev. I'm familiar with the platform, but not too much in depth. So very happy to be here. Thank you. Ah, thank you, Jena. Thank you so much. So let's go to uh, Marcia. Yes. Um... Good morning. I'm the one living in uh, Alicante, Spain, but I'm from Italy. I work from uh, for an uh, EU agency, and uh, here I'm working as activity manager. I uh, organize events for stakeholders. I'm also very much interested in uh, co-participatory projects and uh, initiatives, and I also coordinate in design thinking workshop here at the office. Plus, I'm also involved in um, at the UIPO, the agency where we work. We have an internal NGO made of uh, volunteers from the office, and uh, we have just embarked in a new initiative for uh, engaging uh, the local NGOs to understand how to collaborate with them, plus a project that might be funded next year in uh, Latin America. So this is what I'm interested about. I'm very happy to be part of the community now. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Marcia. You you see in Capacity for Dev, you have many ways to uh share your activities either in project or to collaborate with other members. I'm ha happy to have you here. Stalian uh, Solen, please also teach us how to say your name. <laughs> yes, hello everyone. My name is Solin Saryan. Um, I also am in Armenia. Um, I 
am with the Fund for Armenian Relief, um, and our work is in the regions uh, of Armenia. And um, I learned about this platform, and what was really interesting to have a have a forum to connect with other professionals in this field. And I'm I'm uh, thrilled to. Uh, learn more about you and uh, collectively all of us um, and and our work together um, and so I'm 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 glad to glad to join. Thank you, Saria. Uh, happy to have you here with us. Let's go to Patricia. Sorry to have skipped your turn. Uh, that's fine. Good morning, everyone. I'm Patricia Rosa. I'm based in Spain. I'm the team leader of the Knowledge Hub on Gender Equality, uh, Human Rights Based Approach and Disability Inclusion for supporting DG INPA and DG NIA in all external actions. So we as um, Knowledge Hub, we use a lot of capacity for DEP. And um, up to now, our main role was to share, you know, um, documents and papers, reports and the courses that we have developed under the Knowledge Hub. So very nice to meet all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Uh, let's go to Nicholas. Yes, hello, Nicholas Gerard. Can you hear me well? Yes. I'm based in Cyprus, uh, although I have a okay. French passport. I work for the Global Water Partnership, which is based actually in Stockholm. Uh, and we have a network of uh, working in about 180 countries around the world on, on water security. And in particular, we work, we do a lot of capacity building. We have a network with UNDP, for example, uh, capacity international capacity building network for um, sustainable water management. So we're just interested to see how we can connect you know, our networks and platforms with your own. All right. Uh, so many opportunities here in Capacity for Dev, I believe. Happy to have you here with us, Nicolas. Uh, let's go with uh, Ricardo. Ricardo. Yes, hello everyone. Good morning. Uh, I'm Ricardo. Uh, I am also uh, Italian and Brazilian, and I'm based in Brussels. Um, I work as a consultant uh, supporting um, various um, uh, EU-funded projects. Uh, especially on sustainable finance, uh, climate change, and uh, and um, um, other topics such as green economy, etc. Uh, as project coordinator or team leader, so uh, happy to to be here today. Yes, happy to have you here with us, and another Brazilian. <laughs> nice. Uh, so let's finish. Uh... Salola and then Joaquin, uh, Joaquin, uh, however you say your name, and then Laura. And for um, the other ones, just one second, for the other ones, uh, please just put your introduction in the chat if you uh, ever want to introduce yourself too. There you go. Sorry, Salola, there you go. No problem. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Tina Salola and uh, I am from Finland, but based at the moment in Nepal. Uh, I am working as a communications officer on a bilateral project uh, between Finland and Nepal um, that aims to um, uh, improve teacher education here in three provinces. And of course, we are EU funded partly, partly so hence I am here. Very eager to uh, learn more about this platform. Okay, happy to have you here with us. Uh, if you have EU funded projects or just projects uh, in ongoing or already completed, I invite everyone to put the information on capacity for dev. As you see, we have a dedicated feature for that, we have a static website that stays in capacity for dev forever. Uh, but let's go to the next one. Thank you, Salola, uh, Tina. Uh, Joaquin or Joaquin? Yes, uh, my name is Joaquin. Thank you so much, Ivan. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Joaquin Caudeli, <coughs> coordinator of the Practitioners Network. The Practitioners Network is uh, the main network association representing European, mem European member states uh, development organizations um, like German, French, uh, Italian development agencies in Brussels and uh, well, I'm half uh, Spanish Argentinian and looking forward to engage with Capacity for Dev. We have been working with Capacity for Dev for, for a long time, but we have not been engaging in deep. So that's why I'm starting um, all over again and, and giving a new try to Capacity for Dev. 
Thank you so much, Ivan. Okay, thank you, Joaquin. Happy to have you with us. Uh, let's. Uh, we have already something of Partitions Network in capacity for that, I believe. Uh, but let's see. Uh, happy we to have a you. group. You, there's a group that I, I just realized we have a group and I will start to coordinate it. So. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Laura? Yes. Hello. Hey, good morning, everyone. I am Laura. Uh, I am Spanish, but I am also based in Brussels. And I am part of the Knowledge Hub with uh, Patricia Rosa. And I am the, the um, coordinator of the, of the component of communication. So I, I've been working a lot, as Patricia has said, in, uh, with Capacity for Death. And I am super pleased to be here this morning. Okay, happy to have you here with us, Laura. Uh, let's go to the. Sorry, I have. Let's rush a little bit. We have to go to the presentation. Uh, let's go back to it. Ta -ta. Um, I cannot see anymore. You have to put the presentation again in just a second, everyone. Um, yes, go go ahead, Yidimir, uh, present yourself in the meanwhile. Happy to have you here. Hello, everyone. This is this is Yildirim Gündüz from Turkey. I'm connecting from Ankara, the capital city of Turkey. I worked as a project coordinator, project manager, program manager of uh, evaluation and monitoring experts during the, my mission in uh, in the Turkish Ministry of UFS for more than 10 years and after that I, I resigned and I'm currently working in a private firm in Turkey and I'm doing my Did government affairs uh, I'm doing my government affairs things Many, now I, I still, yeah I'm here to expand my uh, engagement with the, the capacity for dev and thank you for the session to organize. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here with us. All right. So we also uh, behind capacity for dev, we have a strong team uh, that starts with Ariella, that it's our it is our coordinator from the Intpa side from the European Commission. Uh, we have Claudia, which is their, uh, our content co coordination expert. Dimi Dimitrios, which is our communication expert. Mahi, which is our pro uh, business project manager. Uh, she translates the improvements, uh, the, ne the needs from the users into uh, techno uh, technology improvements from our platform. Uh, Marie, Maria, which is our user support manager, she's the one that uh, will be uh, supporting you with your technical needs in the platform. And finally, me, the community manager, I, I can support you with uh, layout, design of your spaces, but also on how to engage the community in Capacity for Dev. Today we will cover uh, what is the platform, who can use it, what features are, are available for you, how you can benefit from being a, use, a user, and a virtual tour at the end of it. For the questions you may have, please uh, write them on the Q&A session of this uh, Teams meeting. Uh, we will be selecting some of them to respond at the end of the session. Otherwise, if you're not able to, to answer to them, uh, we have the support mailbox here in the chat. You can address these questions to, directly to us. So what is Capacity for Dev? Capacity for Dev is the European Commission online knowledge sharing platform designed to connect professionals in international cooperation. It started back in 2009. Um, 
so I don't know if anyone has seen it before, but it has a whole different uh, face, uh, capacity for dev. We migrated in May 2023 to this new new layout that you can see nowadays. Um, what we changed essentially was we tried to make a more user-friendly platform, uh, more up-to-date to what we have now, uh, on the internet nowadays. Uh, the whole idea of Capacity for Dev is to boost our ability to develop capacities through knowledge sharing. Um, we have many activities that go on in the platform. For example, an, amb an ambassador's program that is uh, was recently relaunched. If you saw our homepage, uh, there's there are members from various EU institutions, uh, many initiatives, implementing partners, um, and it, the main intent is to promote best practices. Uh, from the field, uh, share experiences and lessons learned. Uh, to further support our users, uh, Capacity for Dev now offers webinars like this one we have. Uh, we have the onboarding webinar every month and the advanced webinar. Uh, we now call it Space Managers Webinars, with, that is dedicated to people that are space managers in Capacity for Dev, which is people that are managing a group, managing a project, or managing a resource. Um, to join the, to be able to join the advanced webinar, you have to create a space. Uh, but this month, we are replacing the advanced webinar by the next week, uh, building your project webinar that is dedicated to everyone that would like to open a project in Capacity for Dev. Mostly, uh, we are trying to expand to EU delegations, to consultancies, to implementing partners, to NGOs, civil society. Uh, so if you have, if you know, if you have a company, if you know someone that has a company that is managing a project in, in international cooperation, just invite them to this webinar next week. The link is already on in the chat. Uh, we are we have a leading position uh, on knowledge sharing in the field of external relations. Uh, we have over five thousand users in our platform, and we are connecting uh, international corporations, professionals worldwide. Basically, how do we do all of this? Uh, we collaborate. We engage, we learn from each other, we share, uh, we use tools all in one place. And who, who can use from this platform? Who can use capa from Capacity for Dev? Um, as I mentioned, we have over 5,000 users, uh, which would I mean members of Capacity for Dev, people that are registered, and on average, uh, per month, we have 300 new requests. Um, we have 33% of people from the EU institutions and the platform, and the rest divided by other institutions, by government, international organizations, NGOs, civil society, academia, private sector, and overall. Um, what is the big added value of Capacity for Dev is that it's the only collaborative platform where all relaxed members interact with equal access in public, restricted, and private environments. Who is the relaxed family? Uh, it's all EU external actual institutions, EU delegations, and EU member states delegations. Uh, so you have all of them interacting in one place, but that is not exclusive to them. You also have people, external people uh, being able to interact and to sh uh, share knowledge. Uh, as it is hosted within the EU institutions, uh, it is a secure, a, a very secure IT environment. Um, as you see, every time you log in, you have to, you have some steps to guarantee uh, it is you. Um, we also have some pretty straightforward 
cleaning of the platform, uh, way of approving members and guaranteeing that only real people are here with us, not bots, not spammers. Um, it is a community created platform, which is to say 80% of all our content is community created. The rest, 20% is created by us, uh, the editorial team, uh, by me, by Maria, the user support. We're all producing some kind of content to help the users uh, use the platform. We also are active on X, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook, um, which is to say as well that if you have some interesting activity and you would like some promotion on their social media, please uh, send us a message uh, by the support uh, mailbox and we can also promote your activities on our social media that has some considerable reach uh, right now. Let's say uh, YouTube uh, X, we have 8.6 followers, 8.6 thousand followers, LinkedIn, LinkedIn uh, 3.1, I would say, and so on. So. If your page is not so well developed yet, that doesn't have much followers, you can uh, ask us to improve your visibility as well. It is a multilingual website in the process. Uh, we have some content in French and Spanish besides English already, uh, but the platform will be translated soon to English, French and Spanish officially. And for the other languages, like you already have in other uh, EU websites, the machine translation, which is pretty effective right now. What are the features that are available in the platform? As I mentioned, we have the spaces, which are groups, projects, and resources. And we also have articles. The articles are produced exclusively by our editorial team even if it's uh, an article that is not authored by them, uh, it passes by their revision. So we have uh, Voices in View, Editor Spotlight. We have many a range of uh, possibilities of articles, even podcasts uh, that you can explore. And if you would like to promote your initiative a little further, you can also get in contact by the support mailbox uh, and seek for a collaboration with our editorial team. So uh, for our spaces, uh, it's basically divided on the intent. So groups are for collaboration. If you'd like to have people uh, creating discussions, debating, uh, brainstorming, uh, getting the heads together for creating something. Uh, it's basically an online community where we all gather around uh, a specific topic or a geographic area. Even, even if we have projects as a dedicated space, sometimes the groups are a back end uh, of the projects where people can discuss uh, some technical terms. Uh, projects are to share and showcase new ongoing and past projects. Uh, and the main goal here is to substitute external websites. Basically, we have uh, throughout the internet many websites that go dead. They are not updated anymore or just not even uh, the funding is over after the project is over and the project goes uh, down. The website goes down and in capacity for dev you have the opportunity to display your your page and that it will stay there it will not be deleted when it's completed it will just be marked as completed uh, and you can still update information on it it's not so much for collaboration so you cannot join a project as you join a group you can follow it for to follow its updates um, and the people that manage it can produce news about the project instead of discussions, which is uh, what you have in groups. Finally, res resources are for a wide range of tools that are cross-cutting, about cross-cutting topics, about uh, multi, uh, multi-thematic uh, tools, uh, let's say materials, lessons learned, 
methodologies that can you be used to uh, many areas of international cooperation. Here's a little diagram so you can follow this uh, our logic on how we created all these spaces. Uh, so you want to have interactions with members. Yes, you create a group. The groups can be public, restricted, or private. Uh, public is open to to everyone. They can see all the content inside of it, but still you can decide whether you want to uh, people ask to join or they will join automatically. Restricted is dedicated for uh, certain domains, mostly for uh, the external relations of the European Union and the European Commission institutions, uh, but also we have domains from the cooperation agencies of member states. Uh, this is this can all be selected inside of the group, uh, the level of restriction, or or you can have private groups which is only people that you invite will be able to see and join the group. If you would like, if you don't want interactions with the members uh, and you want to share knowledge publicly about your project, we have the project. Project can be only be public. And finally, if you want to share an horizontal non-thematic resource or multi-thematic resource, we also have the possibility of public and restricted resources. All right, so now we will go to a virtual tour. Share the screen. A reminder, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A uh, from this Teams meeting. So here we are, Capacity for Dev. This is the page you see when you're not logged in in Capacity for Dev. But what I wanted to show here is that for some other level of visibility, we, we have in the non-logged in page, community highlights, groups, projects, and resources that are highlighted, which are picked by our editorial team each month. Um, to give some more visibility. For example, for groups, we have the OPSIS group, which has a lot of members, seven, has 794. We have three projects displayed. Um, and this goes by projects, groups, and resources that are well-structured, that have, um, that has uh, active members. So, but also, if you'd like us to display here, you can drop us an email in our support mailbox. So this is the page when you are already logged in. So you can log in here. I automatically go to this page because I'm already registered and uh, the steps are completed. So here's the logged in page. This page is generated by the algorithm selecting uh, content by the topics and countries of interest when you register in the platform. Uh, although the first featured uh, element here will also always be selected by our editorial team, which are basically the articles we publish every month. Uh, every two weeks, yeah, I would say even. Here you have some statistics about also your topics of interest and countries of interest, what has been uh, updated since last month. You can see the people that you are following and it's the people that are following you. And below the featured article, you see the suggestions of events, groups, uh, user activity, projects, content added in groups or projects, for example, and so on. The people that you follow will also influence the algorithm in this page. So you see that, for example, I'm following 
my main account. This is the account that doesn't have admin rights, so I can see the platform as a normal user for you. So I follow myself, uh, my main account. Every time I add a content, it appears here. For example, this is for next week event. Uh, we're doing a project website on Capacity for Dev. I already show you how it looks. You have, you can add it here to your calendar, Outlook, Google, for example. And you can even comment on the event if you have any questions. Here in this, we go. Th we will go through the basic elements of uh, the page. You have home topics, countries, articles, resources, browse content in the menu, and here you have post content and help and support. The help and support uh, pages are all concentrated here. They have excellent tutorials explaining how to do pretty much everything in this platform. And here is the button you use for publishing content. Uh, you also have my profile here where you find interesting stuff for you. For example, if you go to my profile and click on my profile again, you can select your settings. And here down below, you on agreements, you can allow members to contact me through my personal contact form, which allows the chat. And also you can set up how often would you like to receive notifications from Capacity for Dev and even select none if you don't like notifications. So uh, we went through home, we went through my profile. Uh, let's go to topics. Topics is our powerful, our first powerful search engine in Capacity for Dev. Uh, every time someone publishes something, posts content in Capacity for Dev, they are they have to select a topic and a country at least. The topics pages uh, can be for main topics. For example, if you click here, you see the main agriculture and rural dev development uh, topic page, but you can also see the subtopics page, which are kind of the same and they have the same configuration. For all topics pages, you have the groups, the projects, the discussions, the library items, the resources, articles, people and events. Groups, for example, for agriculture and rural development. Um, you see, of course, the public group, not the restricted ones, and the private groups that you're part of. This is the whole layout of a group. Uh, you can request membership to whatever public group you like. You can also see the projects and for every tab like this, you can type a keyword to look for a more specific case. For example, if you would like, if you are searching for Team Europe, of course, you're going to find this group. You can also see a uh, archiver or not archive groups. Um, let me just clear that what I want to show you here. Yes, you can select subtopics in this case. Um, it got unselected. Let me go back. Okay. Ah, it shows the subtopics only to pub to groups that are available. That's why. So you have projects, likewise, discussions. Here you have, it reunites all of the discussions that are in groups that have tagged uh, agriculture and rural development as a topic. So you, you don't have necessarily to go to each of the groups to look for discussions. You, can, you have all in one place, 
Likewise, for library items, which are documents you publish in Capacity for Dev, these are knowledge sharing documents. Library items can be published in uh, groups, resources, and projects. You have the specific resources uh, for these articles that are tagged. And if you're looking for some networking in Capacity for Dev and you want to network according to the thematic you are working on, here you are, you have people. I showed you how to activate the contact form. So for example, this person does not allow being contacted. He set it up in his settings, but this one does. So he, here's how it appears if you want to send a message. So you don't necessarily need their email address to be able to communicate with other users. And you also have the events and capacity for dev. Another way of looking for content or people is going through the search engine of countries. For countries, you have a specific map that appears that pops up and where you can see all the uh, a summary of all the content and members uh, that is related to this country. For Algeria, for example, you have five groups, 120 discussions published, 148 uh, library items. And if you go to the country, it, it looks like pretty much as the topic page. You have likewise groups, projects, discussions, library items, resources, articles, people's, people and events. Uh, if in this case, as Team Europe is acting in this country, you have a little summary as well. Um, and to mention for topics and countries, it, the overview page, it works pretty much as the home page for you, but only for this country or topic. So you have all the activity here in a, in a timeline, in a feed, uh, relating some events, some projects, some groups, which you can join. For articles and resources, you will notice that we have both in browse content and in, in up here in this menu. In this case here is uh, you have the featured article and for the other one is just simply a search engine of articles. You have more on a list. For resources as well, you'll be like, you have this menu page that shows key EU ref official resources, uh, recent resources that, are, that can be EU or not EU. And if you go here, you see them for in a search uh, results in a list. Uh, as I mentioned, you, we have quite a few categories of uh, articles. We have voices in view, editor spotlights, we have videos, ambassador blogs, posts, podcasts, and infographics. There's a lot of interesting content to explore. I'll let you to it. Recently, we have created this video for the Capacity Development Official Day. Uh, this is the brief virtual tour. It's also uh, nice to share with your colleagues if they are, are not able to be here in this session. But also, uh, this session is being recorded and will be provided by the end, uh, some days after the, the end of the session. I wanted to show you resources. They are tailored in a different manner from groups and projects. They can vary a little bit. You have really interesting resources here. Um, and you can select by them by, for example, if you are in results and indicators for development, you can select them by SDGs. If you are on topics, I forgot to say, mention as well, you can also, instead of navigating through the DG Intpa official way of organizing topics, you can go 
from SDGs and you will find the related topics in Capacity for Dev. So the Browse Content tab uh, is also for a search engine where you find all the groups, projects, discussions like you had concentrated in topics and countries. Um, but if you are wondering how to create a group, how to create a project, uh, how to open a resource, here's where you have to go. You go to Groups, then you find this button, Create, create a Group. Likewise for projects and for resources. Uh, for groups, I wanted to show you a specific group that we recently launched. Um, this group is designed for all Capacity for Dev users. We are recently, we are uh, soon launching the Tips for Users campaign that will be published in the here in the discussions. Uh, it's both it's both for people that are looking for uh, tips and tricks on how to make a pre, uh, beautiful layout of their group or their project or the resource, or on how to best use uh, our platform platform features to communicate, uh, to create visibility to your initiatives. In groups, you always have uh, this tab, overview, info, discussions, library, members, and events. Differently from projects and resources where you can edit these tabs, you can decide to eliminate some of those options, for example. Um, in the info pages of the best practices for capacity for dev group, you will find creative ways of using our features to present a beautiful layout. Uh, we recently had a space managers webinar on SEO uh, practices, search engine optimization practices in capacity for dev, but here you have a little uh, description of what you can do already with what we have in capacity for dev for example if you have if you're managing a space you can edit the url the things that appear here after the last bar we could change all of this text so we convey something that is more uh it's optimized for search engines The info pages uh, are presented here. Here's how you have the discussions. So, for example, a best practices that I like to share with users is that you can use emojis to make some more visual, to present some visual elements in your text and to be as engaging as uh, social media is nowadays. Uh, if you didn't know on Windows, if you want, you would like to uh, show the emojis bar, you just press Windows plus the bottom, the dot. And if you are using Mac, you press Control, Command and Space. Uh, this is while typing something. So let's say here I press, I don't know if you visualize what I'm visualizing, but then I can look for this even. Anyways, uh, last but not least, so after you have created a group or a project, basically you go to the, you just have to fill everything here. You have to select a topic to select a country. You always have to put a banner and a thumbnail. The format of it is uh here what i wanted to show you is when you are creating a group you can s that's where you decide if it's going to be public restricted or private be very careful because in my, in some cases it might be irreversible uh if you choose restricted going to public uh might be a problem or the other way around uh, this is for visibility, uh, as I mentioned, but you can also select the joining method. So some, some people, they 
put request to join and they forgot they forget about that and then people get in line to join the group uh, and they stay there for a long time so if you're not going to uh, come to manage the group so often uh, please put automatic approval so members can join automatically and be able to contribute uh, we already act as community managers of all the groups so we avoid spammers we'll be controlling that so you wouldn't have to, uh, to worry about this in your groups um, and after you create a project or a group or even if you join a group this is how you publish content inside of the inside of it uh, to be able to publish inside of projects and resources you have to be an admin but for groups you just need to be a member so let's say you want to publish a document a video an audio do you want to start a discussion here whenever you select one of the possibilities it will show you the groups the projects and the resources you were part of so i'm already part of the job opportunities um so this is was the post post a document you select from your computer and then you have a little description you always have to select a topic a topic in a country and for the case of library you we can you can have uh, different folders for videos uh just to add we don't support videos in our platform but we have our youtube channel uh, capacity for dev members channel you can send your video to us for example via we transfer uh, and send to our mail support mailbox and we can upload it for you in our youtube channel and then you can use the link to embed the video directly in capacity for dev if you don't have your uh, youtube channel yourself all right so that was the tour uh so a little bit, bit more than i wanted at the beginning let's go for some questions and answers um the first question i see here if is it possible to start a discussion without engaging in a group uh no you cannot start discussions if you didn't if you're not a member of the group uh, but what you can do is, uh, let me go back to the virtual tour. Let's say you have the job opportunities. What you can do still is to comment on it, but you cannot start a discussion. So thank you, you, thank you, Ivan. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, next one. What is the difference between private and restricted? Um, when you select restricted, let me go here. Um, oops. When you select restricted, only specific platform members will be able to see the content of the group. By default, EU institution staff and possibly others. So you select here restricted, then you have to select the domains that will be able to see your group. Uh, so it can be the European Commission, it can be the development agencies or the EES. Um, and we also have, for example, if you select this, this is for all agencies, uh, and this it's only the specific agency for each uh, European country. And you even have for United Nations in this case. So if you select this, people that have in their emails when they register in capacity for dev uh, this domain, they will be able to see the group. Whereas for private, it's only members uh, that you invite 
via their via their email or their accounting capacity for dev directly that will be able to join to see the group to and to comment to start a discussion to publish a document and so on thank you uh, and it's clear thank you you're welcome do we have any other questions uh since we have five minutes left if you would like to open your camera we still have a the possibility and if not uh yes if not thank you so much for being here today um we have quite a lot of contributions in the networking session i have happy to have so many people uh, be sure to join next week next week's webinar if you would like to start a project in capacity for dev i'll go more into in details uh, it's not only a virtual tour like i did today but we will talk about uh, some of the about the importance of opening a project in capacity for dev especially for consultancy agencies well thank you so much this um, the recording of this meeting will be available soon so you'll be able to share with your colleagues that were not present here you have already our contact uh, support mailbox uh, in the chat do not hesitate to contact us in case you have any questions and well let's keep in touch thank you so much bye bye thanks Bye, thank you. Bye. Bye, thank you. Bye.